Hey guys, it's Mao. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I wanted to give you a rundown of the Unite 2022 conference that featured on the 1st of November, and it was a look at everything that you can see that's coming in the future for Unity. Now, I watched it, and it was about an hour and a half, and I'll put the link in the description to the full conference. You can check out the blog post to get some more details, but I'm just going to go through everything that I noted down that I thought was relevant to you guys and what you'd want to know. So the last time that Unity did a conference was in 2019, so they've missed out on some cracking stuff. John Riccardello started out by saying that 50% of all games are created in Unity across platforms like mobile, PC, and console, and 72% of the top 1,000 mobile games are also created in Unity, as you can show that you can imagine that Unity does have a big market share in the mobile space. I've been looking to extend support across all of their platforms, whether it's PC, mobile and devices, and specific extended support for Xbox Series S and X, PS5, with a new inclusion of MetaQuest Pro and Android asset building, so you will see constant improvements to those pipelines if you're somebody who takes advantage. Something that they went also to mention on for their VR and XR support, which they will still and did have support for PlayStation VR and will have support for VR 2, MetaQuest 2 and MetaQuest Pro. And the big takeaway was improvements across device play. So if you create a game for MetaQuest 2, you want to be able to share these things between other platforms, whether it's PlayStation VR or other things that are not generically supported together. So Unity has created a project called XRI 2.2, which is available now in Unity 2021 LTS, which comes from, and you can get that from inside the package manager. And it allows a simplified solution to create interactions with a inbuilt framework and set of APIs, which can be deployed across all of the platforms without you having to create multiple versions or support multiple different devices. So this XRI comes with grabbing locomotion, ray interactions, and interacting with basic UI elements. So essentially they said it as you can build once and it will work everywhere. And then you can even use this to build your own APIs to create custom interactions specifically for what your game wants to achieve. Then they went on to talk about the custom editor and for the longest time writing a custom editor, you could use assets like Odin Inspector or you would have to write, and I did have a tutorial on creating a custom inspector and writing that yourself, but they're going to integrate the UI toolkit for better editor UI functionality. So you can get better separation, more flexible layouts and advanced styling with different complex UI supported with the UI toolkit. You can use visual workflows in all of these things as it gets more and more integrated into the editor. And you can use UI Builder to add specifics for buttons, text fields, property fields, and toolbars, which are often natively supported in the Unity editor. So going forward, the UI toolkit will generate default inspectors that across the UI toolkit for draws that will work anywhere with lots of common properties and things that you can access. So you don't have to write a, a full custom editor every single time you want to do something with new tree view controls for multiple columns and large data sets. You can draw vector drawings like splines and more different graph style outputs. And 2023 will see continued workflow and performance improvements for all of the custom editor extensions that you'll want to create. Unity did then go on to talking about specifics of URP and HDRP and how they're trying to integrate and, and achieve parity between or simplified parity between URP and HDRP so you can use these in the same project. So if you need to support something for mobile and then you want to support something for console, but it's the same game, you would often have to have two different projects and it would be quite awkward and you'd have to have maybe multiple teams managing each thing. But now there's, they're trying to integrate as many things that will be similar so you can actually get the features of both depending on the performance that you need and the platforms you want to support. And then they're trying to achieve or increase parity between URP and the standard render pipeline. So URP going forward will become more powerful and have all the tools, but better. And they went on to talk about forward plus rendering in URP, which often in URP, you would have a problem if you're in forward rendering that you would be limited to the light count, which won't be the case anymore. You have better performance for real-time lighting 
and just better performance across the board. And URP will deliver decal tools for better performance compared to what you will find in the render pipeline to get more decals, better performance and everything across the board. And there was details, some technical details on what you can find and use in HDRP, which are supported now, which include you can still use HDRI skies. They're specifically static. You can use wind distortion to create things within the environment, but the actual atmosphere and look of the sky will not actually change based on the sun. It will always be static because it's made of textures. So you can use a HDRP physically based sky with just a couple of clicks, which is realistic to the world around you. So you can add something like a cloud layer to this, then you can add up to eight layers of cloud, which allows you to have hundreds of variations for each. You can affect this with wind to create dynamic skies, which push the clouds across. They've got inclusions of volumetric clouds, which will be lit by the sun and the environment. And also big requested things for volumetric fog and light shafts, which are affected by the volumetric clouds themselves. There's a brand new water system for creating seas, lakes, rivers, and pools, which is affected by all the lighting and all the different effects that are added. Then they have new features like the adaptive probe volume system, which automatically scatters light probes around your scene for all real time objects, which need to receive per pixel light information. They went on to talk more about graphics and specifically about direct X12 support. And again, you can check out more details on this because I don't know if it's as relevant for everybody who watches this, but it's out of the experimental phase and it will be included in 2022.2, the tech stream, and you will have better performance overall, especially in really large scale levels with over 4,000 draw calls, 100 FPS performance gain on previous versions of DirectX, but you can use it now in many different instances. And then they had a big talk about their cloud build services and their collaboration tools that they have about cloud build. So then you can use that to build out your game without you actually using your PC or performance yourself to have to wait. You can do that. You can distribute that to testers. They give feedback. You can iterate that and have plastic SCM to collaborate with other developers to be able to create iterations and new features. They did go on to include, and they will try and innovate with constant improvements to multiplayer for net code for game objects, which is similar to the editor experience that you will have in Unity, which will allow you to take all the current workflows and integrate that into a multiplayer experience. You can use all the profiling tools to track all game objects across multiplayer experiences. And they did go on to a detailed look from a few developers talking about Unity's matchmaking and server system, which upscales based on how much performance you would need if your game starts taking off and gets millions of users, you need a way to scale up your server needs for the amount of users that you have. So Unity has this built in without you having to create specific matchmaking tools. Unity have this, you can dedicate players, introduce voice support, increase, decrease matchmaking times and do a lot of functionality in the Unity dashboards without ever going into the editor to actually change something. And they did a really nice example about a card game. So within their system that they've got, which is the Unity dashboard for game services, they had a look of a card game that they were making. And look, say this card value has a value of five for its power, and you wanted to change that power, and you wanted to set that to two, you can do that in the Unity dashboard, which control variables and things that I imagine you expose. So then you never have to go into the editor to make an update. You can do that on the fly for the server side and it change it and you can set a set of players that will be the test group and the original group and analytics will look at that side by side and see what seems to be working in regards to your game. Then Unity went specifically onto their demos that they've done with the enemies demo, which is available for you to get hold of to have a look at some of the interesting facial animations that they've used with their tools that they've acquired recently, Ziva Dynamics and otherwise. And they have the hair system package, which is also available to get hold of on the Unity store or the package manager. I'm not sure which, but you can take a look at that and they will improve all support for all these tools that will be integrated into Unity for you to use realistic facial animations that you can control at runtime, hair systems, which are highly performant and can often have millions, millions of hairs to create absolutely 
photorealistic creations. So do be sure to comment down below if you think I've missed anything. Be sure to check out all the links to the blog and the stream and everything that you need to know from there. So hopefully this was the sort of one-stop shop with basic information on what you wanted to know what will be coming in the future. So thanks so much for checking this out. Do be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 165 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do come and check out all the links in the description, including the brand new Low Poly Bundle on Humble Bundle. Check out all my great assets on the Unity Asset Store, along with amazing savings on my website. But a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner, Raheem Whitaker, Gene Pomney, Manos Barracast, Terence Conrad, Walter Dunson, Renny Leisure, Topher Chambers, Alicia Faden, Daniel Getter, Jean Kishikawa, Takuya, Ron J. Hosh, Thomas Mersaleski, Callum Murray, Mark Rondu, Beast Gaming, Marvin Church, Osame Abdul, Hoglan Nigan, Nafakun, Josh Huang, Yaxis, Game Mobile 122, Kermits, Thomas Lopez, and curry for gaming and thank you to the rest of my amazing subscribers and everybody else who comes to watch the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers